My name is Alan Duncan. I'm a professor at the University of Edinburgh in something called the Global Academy of Agriculture and Food Security. And I also have a half-time role with ILRI, the International Livestock Research Institute, um, which is headquartered in Nairobi. But actually, my main experience has been in Ethiopia, where I spent many years um, working on livestock feed issues. Um, but for the last few years, I've been based back in the UK. So that's me. And I'm just going to give you a brief introduction to what we're calling the Jamil Observatory for Food Security Early Action. Next slide, please. So just to highlight some context, um, which I'm sure most of you are up to speed with, but dry lands are our focus. We know that dry lands are fragile ecosystems through both natural and human factors. Those combine to to lead to a series of fairly harsh realities for those living in drylands. And that uh, those harsh realities are only likely to become worse with the impact of climate change. Uh, pastoral communities are obviously particularly at risk of climate change. And we've seen indeed in recent years an increasing incidence of food shocks in the Horn of Africa and elsewhere. So that's the the fragile human ecosystem within drylands, um, but what's required to, to deal with that? Uh, what's needed are, are, are pretty tough decisions which need um, data and evidence. Those decisions are not easy to make in the absence of data and evidence, and even with data, they're sometimes not easy to make. But the, that data and evidence needs to be well targeted. We need to know where to act. Um, to be most effective. We need to know when to act, uh, particularly acting in advance of crises, and the data and evidence need to be trusted and owned by local actors. Um, it's, there's little merit in, in data being kind of brought in, which is not really fully trusted by local actors. So that, that's the context. Next slide, please. So in, in response to the, that, context, uh, a series of um, partners have been in dialogue over the last couple of years, actually, to think what we could do in this space. And so we're now launching something called the Jamil Observatory for Food Security Early Action, which is essentially at the moment a consortium of partners who bring complementary capabilities and want to work together in this space to develop what we might call an innovation lab, which stimulates research and action based on expressed local needs. Next slide, please. Who are we? Uh, we're a, a, a group of five uh, partners, the University of Edinburgh, the International Livestock Research Institute, Save the Children, JPAL, the Abdul, Abdul Latif Jamil Poverty Action Lab, and Community at Jamil. You heard George Richards um, introduce himself and the observatory just a moment ago. So those are the five founding partners of the observatory. Next slide, please. And as I said, we each bring complementary capabilities. The University of Edinburgh convenes the observatory, but also has significant um, expertise in earth observation, data science, and digital education. The International Livestock Research Institute has a long track record of applied livestock and climate change research, including in dry land and pastoral areas in East Africa, and as I said, are based, headquartered in, in Nairobi. So they bring evidence to the table. Save the Children are an international NGO uh, with, again, a long history. They're grounded in the region and they've been developing various forecast based action approaches and tools, some of which we'll hear about um, in a few moments. So they bring um, a long experience of, of practice in this area in the region. JPAL are our evaluation partner. They specialize in generating evidence to inform policy through robust assessments. They have a global reputation on the application of 
RCTs, for example, to development interventions. So they bring evaluation to the table. And Community Jamil, as George said, um, have a long history of investment in education, health and climate, and in evidence-based policy making, and also have a wide network of partners uh, who can bring some influence to bear on this uh, issue. Next slide, please. In terms of the values for the observatory, these have emerged from conversations among partners over recent months. What we aspire to be is complementary. In other words, to fill gaps that others can't reach rather than duplicating. We want to complement what others are doing. We want to be collaborative. We want to work in partnership uh, with actors on the ground and in the region. And we want to be solutions focused. So making use of some of the leading edge and uh, applicable innovations emerging from the digital revolution, for example, to bring to bear to this issue, to early action in, in East Africa. So those are the kind of three core values of the observatory. Next slide, please. Each of the partners are a mature um, organization in their own right. We've got a long track record of doing various um, relevant evidence-led projects, data and evidence-led projects. Um, and I'll just indicate and a few examples of those. Um, next slide, please. Firstly, um, Save the Children have been involved in developing uh, household economy analysis um, to support early action. Next. Iori have their IBLI product, the Index-Based Livestock Insurance, which is an insurance project product, which is payments are, which are triggered by um, earth observation metrics, uh, which track feed availability for livestock. So there's the IBLI project. Next. University of Edinburgh, we've been in conversation with the project called the Data for Children Collaborative, which works with UNICEF to uh, bring data solutions to problems children are facing uh, using innovative approaches for generating research uh, through, through community dialogue. Next. Um, the Rangeland Atlas was recently published. Um, the, generating maps on rangeland issues. It's a consortium of partners, ILRI are involved, FAO, <clears throat> the World Food Programme. Uh, I think I'm right in that. Um, <laughs> Worldwide Fund for Nature, the in International um, Land Coalition, so a range of partners. These are all, by the way, taken from the observatory website and you can drill down to more detail if you go to the website. Uh, next. And then there's LD4D, the Livestock Data for Decisions Community of Practice, which is led by SEBI Livestock from the University of Edinburgh, uh, funded by the Gates Foundation. That's a community of practice similar to the one which we hope to establish, which is more global in reach and addresses issues of connecting data with those who need data. So data producers and data decision makers. Uh, next. And finally, there's uh, what we're calling our foundational project. This project um, is about evaluating forecast-based action, some of the forecast-based action approaches which Save the Children have been developing. Uh, JPAL are setting up some randomized evaluations of those forecast-based action approaches. So that project is just getting off the ground and we'll hear a bit more detail about that in a moment. Next. So what's the opportunity? The opportunity is around harnessing, as I've said, some of these advance, advances in earth observation and data science um, in the dry land areas. Also, um, the opportunity revolves around uh, applying real life decision-making in, in situations which 
have potential to achieve outcomes. So connecting data with decision making. And finally, mobilizing research and community capabilities. Um, so bringing together uh, research resources with an understanding of the day-to-day -day realities of communities in the region um, and connecting those two things. Next slide. So our vision is uh, through early action, forecasting and preparedness, vulnerable and agro-pastoral communities in East Africa are food and nutrition secure in the face of climate change now and in the future. So that's our vision. Next slide. So that's just a few uh, introductory points. Um, as I've said, we're very young. We've only just established and we have a few next steps in mind. Uh, firstly, to establish a strong presence in the region, we will have a base at Ilri on the Ilri campus in Nairobi. We plan to appoint an executive director from the region to be based with Ilri. Uh, if people on this call have ideas for promising candidates for that role, then please do get in touch. Uh, we also want to begin the process of identifying research and appointing postdoctoral fellows and students um, to begin to address some of that research. And finally, pandemic permitting, uh, we would like to hold before too long an in-person meeting in Nairobi, um, which would involve hopefully many of the, the participants on this call. Um, yeah, so just drilling down to um, some of the the detail of how this thing might operate. We see um, a community of practice and we see at being at the, the core of what we do. And in some ways, this group on this call is the genesis of this community of practice. So that's central to what to our thinking. We would hope that through dialogue in that community of practice, we would begin to identify some what we call challenge questions things which, if answered, would have a real impact uh, around more effective early action uh, to food shocks. Those challenge questions would go through some kind of um, prioritization process, some kind of distillation, and then would be publicized to a wider network, so put into the public domain. From that, we would establish a series of research projects. Um, I'll describe what they might look like in a moment. And those research projects would form a research portfolio, which would again interact with the community of practice, uh, be guided by um, expertise within the community of practice, um, receive feedback from members of the community of practice, leading, we hope, to options and solutions which are relevant and bring about impacts. So that's the core of the model as we see it. We're still evolving our thinking, but that's um, rather than coming with a set of solutions, uh, our aim is to identify gaps and needs and through research to begin to fill some of those gaps. Next slide. So I talked about research. Um, University of Edinburgh is, is, has a, a wide range of research expertise as does Ilri and other partners. So we would hope to develop a series of what we call research packages, which are formulated in response to the challenge questions posed by the community of practice. So that research could take various forms. It could be through postdoctoral fellows, for example. It could be through studentships, PhD students, master's students, um, or it could be through more nimble, short duration projects, um, which we could call impact collaborations, borrowing the language of the children, the Data for Children Collaborative. So those three strands of um, research mechanisms would 
form a portfolio of research which would report back to the community of practice, receive guidance from the community of practice, and potentially be supported by a data and analytics platform uh, with forecasting tools and services, drawing on expertise from partners, um, particularly the data science expertise at the University of Edinburgh. So that's the research element. Next slide, please. The observatory fellows, as we describe them, and students would um, be conducting research identified by the community of practice. They would be co-supervised by consortium partners and potentially external supervisors as well. We would particularly welcome appointments from the region, um, students from the region, postdocs from the region. And we would also welcome matching funding to take the resources that we have and spread them further to have extended reach um, and extended ownership of the research as well. Next slide. And finally, I mentioned those kind of nimble um, short duration projects where we're in conversation with our colleagues from the Children for Data Collaborative at the University of Edinburgh, who have developed some interesting ways of um, formulating research projects. So in their uh, model, they develop these challenge questions in their, in their case with UNICEF, who are their kind of core partner. They then take those questions and pose them to the research network. They invite expressions of interest from potential collaborators, and then they build teams of of expertise and skills drawn from various sectors to co-design projects with the community of practice. So that's essentially um, one model we might adopt to, um, to generate research projects um, that would emerge and be um, managed through the, through the Jamil Observatory.